Hey everyone, the big story of the week was supposed to be Theresa May's conference speech, uh, which let's just say it didn't go quite according to plan, unless that plan was let's make a pilot for a political comedy show in the style of Frank Spencer. Um, there was a coughing fit, a prankster, the sign literally fell apart behind her and by the end of it I was looking around the stage to see if anyone had put a bucket of wallpaper paste on top of a strategically placed ladder. On the other hand, it has been a busy week elsewhere. Um, there was a massacre in Las Vegas, uh, followed by the ongoing political situation in Catalonia, which, depending who you speak to, I suppose, is either a constitutional disaster or a damn good distraction from events at home. Personally, I'm just looking forward to when Spain vetoes Catalonia from being allowed into the EU and Brussels is then forced to decide whether it wants to A, side with the Catalans and therefore support the implicit concept of nationalism, or B, support Madrid but in the process let the world see that Catalonia didn't crumble without the benevolent overreach of Brussels. As someone from Scotland mind, it's pretty incredible seeing how things are playing out in Barcelona. I suppose a Scottish equivalent would have been for David Cameron to have sent the army into Glasgow two years ago with Union Jacks flying and of course hope that the Celtic fans didn't mistake it for an overzealous troop of Rangers fans. The British army is some of the best troops in the world, but I'd question their chances against 500 East End football fans who've spent all lunchtime getting laggered up and singing support for the IRA. Certainly on the topic of football, I do find it somewhat strange that Nicola Sturgeon is so keen to support Catalan independence. It's already hard enough for Scotland to qualify for a major tournament these days without there essentially being a second Spanish team to contend with. It's going to happen though. Um, it's just a question of how long it will take, I suppose, and more importantly, what the rest of Europe will do to suppress similar secessionist movements. And of course, the white elephant in the room, how Texas will react. Um, it required someone like Abraham Lincoln to hold the US together last time anyone left that union, but Donald Trump turning out in the end to be remembered as a unifying figure, a new Lincoln of George Washington, seems about as likely as Theresa May doing something really brilliantly well, whether it be winning an election or just giving a well-delivered popular speech. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.